Welcome to the show, Five Star Fam. I'm AJ. And wherever it is you get your pods, subscribe, share, and leave us a good rating. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly and Atlanta United's preseason is set. The 2023 preseason will begin in Chattanooga. But uh, yeah, of course, uh, this all leads up to the Saturday, February 25th match. Uh, the home opener against San Jose Earthquakes at the Benz. And yeah, uh, in terms of uh, preseason already starting... Uh, in terms of the first training session, it started on Sunday, January 8th. And yeah, it will be uh, yeah that first preseason friendly against Chattanooga FC on January 28th at Finley Stadium in Tennessee. And then they'll travel to Mexico City where they'll face the... Uh, well, they'll train at the Mexican national team headquarters, but then... Uh, they'll play two matches in Mexico against uh, Atlante FC on February 4th at the Estadio Ciudad de los Deportes and Cruz Azul on February 8th, 8th at uh, its training ground. So uh, Atlante won the 2022 and 2021 Apertura titles in Mexico's second division. And then Cruz Azul they are nine-time Liga MX champions. So, uh, yeah, and they most recently won the 2021 Clausura. So, uh, yeah, streaming information for both matches will be announced at a later time. But, uh, yeah, then LA United will then uh, come home to face their third Mexican opponent of the preseason. Uh, that will be Toluca FC. Uh, that will be on February 15th on uh, and at the Benz for the American Family Insurance Cup. Uh, and that will also be the club's primary kit launch, which, uh, speaking of, yeah, there are a lot of leaks. But uh, then it will, uh, LA United will conclude the preseason on February 18th when uh, they'll travel to St. Louis to face the new MLS expansion side St. Louis City SC and that'll be at City Park so yeah definitely a lot of matches for the preseason some uh, really really kind of intriguing uh, matchups for sure but uh, yeah they'll be going from Chattanooga to Mexico City to Atlanta to St. Louis so uh, definitely, uh, yeah, lots of opponents. Which one are you most excited for? I'm, uh, I'm thinking it's probably going to be Toluca still. Uh, you know, that, uh, that, uh, American Family Insurance Cup, uh, you know, where Darren Eels, uh, showed that, uh, that incredible, um, <laughs> that incredible banner. But also, yeah, the, the primary kit launch should be a lot of fun at that uh, juncture as well but speaking of that kit it's uh, been leaked not only by LA United players uh, but Brandon Vasquez current FC Cincy player and uh, yeah he uh, on his IG story he leaked parts of the new kit with Miles Robinson rocking it uh, some shorts some socks uh, kind of a anthem jacket as well on the uh MLS Media Day when they all got together uh, for the uh, yeah Apple TV kind of uh, all that launch that uh, will be happening soon. But yeah, the socks yeah they're red with some uh, gold stripes, uh, horizontal stripes, more like hoops I guess in that sense, uh, and then the black shorts. But then also uh, there was another leak, and it was uh, yeah. Uh, through people tagging Tiago Almada and uh, a CF Montreal uh, personnel, he was uh, showing that Tiago Almada was in a windbreaker, uh, that some uh, some merch leak, and then a uh, right underneath that you could see the stripes of the new kit 
which goes right in line with the kit leak that we've seen thus far. And then, uh, yeah, a better look at the shorts, uh, which have uh, vertical gold stripes on the sides. So it's black with red socks and uh, black trim on top with gold hoops. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking it looks pretty good. You know, it's, uh, it's going to be something that... Uh, you know, topping down the kit will look quite, quite, uh, you know, I think uh, quite sharp, really. But uh, and then the uh, there seems to be maybe a reversible, uh, a reversible track jacket that uh, with the uh, red stripes on the shoulders and arms. And then a little bit of a look at the inside, which is red as well. So definitely very, very uh, interesting merch that has uh, leaked onto uh, social media. And uh, yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, is it something that uh, you were uh, wanting? Is it something that you're absolutely clamoring to get? Let us know in the comments below. But speaking of the Apple TV uh kind of stuff that's been happening in MLS Media Day. Well, Apple, they have, uh, according to The Athletic, they've said that the new Season Pass app will also include a significant amount of club-created content on channels called Club Rooms, quote-unquote. And according to, uh, yeah, an internal league document that was acquired by The Athletic, uh, those Club Rooms require specific content before and during the season including club profiles, player profiles, and a fan culture specific feature called quote unquote, the ritual. Those channels will also have videos on club legends, quote unquote, and uh, team traditions and big games in the team's history, as well as weekly and monthly content during the season, including first team reports, player interviews, MLS, Next Pro, and Academy reports, and community reports. So really, really interesting. I mean, uh, the clubs that have kind of that club presence uh, that already have uh, a strong media uh, team will probably thrive, and they'll just need to flesh out a little bit more of their team. But those that don't really, they'll probably struggle a little bit here. But uh, yeah, it'll be really, really interesting, I think, because, yeah, there is, uh, you know, Wrexham FC that has uh, the owners Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney of uh, It's Always Sunny that uh, own that team uh, in the lower divisions of England and, uh, yeah, really hugely popular right now. And, of course, uh, you have Ted Lasso, uh, not even a real team, uh, on... Uh, on the Ted Lasso show that, yeah, has gained a lot of popularity. And, yeah, MLS not maybe necessarily, uh, you know, as popular as those things, even though, you know, uh, a lot of American ties. So, I mean, MLS, uh, they stand to be able to uh, really do something here where, yeah, Apple TV and this season pass, it's... Uh, pretty much pretty widely uh, accessible and that makes it for something that will be really really good for uh, the league but also worldwide attention uh, just think about how the Premier League has uh, gained uh, so much viewership because of that I mean uh, for this really uh, relatively nascent league this is very very big of a deal for uh, MLS and its future prospects but uh including that the uh new initial team of broadcasters on apple have been announced and uh taylor twelman of uh formerly of espn f uh, or espn uh has now been uh announced as part of the apple tv broadcast uh and moa do marisa do and jillian or Jillian Sakovitz, uh, they were announced as part of that initial team as well. Uh, and hearsay that uh, Kevin Egan might be uh, part of that. No promises, but uh, hopefully he is. I mean, he has been uh, excellent throughout. And But maybe 
his WWE gig uh, might get in the way because there is uh, going to be a lot, a lot of coverage that will be done. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's killing it at WWE. That's a that's a pretty once in a lifetime type of experience there. So uh, I wouldn't blame him if uh, you know he had to kind of choose one or the other. But uh, yeah, moving on from that, Joseph Martinez. He uh, he posed with a picture with Luis Araujo and Mateo Sosetu, and uh, that was presumably when they were about to go get their medicals. That was on uh, Saturday, January seventh. But then, uh, yeah, this transfer rumor came out from uh, the Athletic that uh, and via uh, Tom Boger as well that LA United they're finalizing an off-season buyout of Joseph Martinez. Yeah, I mean, uh, and apparently then he would join Inter Miami and then they would pick up a portion of his salary. But uh, in turn, Martinez, he wouldn't require a designated player spot for either team. Uh, so essentially we'd be buying him down from a DP spot. And uh, yeah, Atlanta, apparently they're planning to use this offseason buyout to pay a portion of his salary. And according to multiple sources with knowledge of the deal, uh, they, uh, they this offseason buyout allows the club to free up the space for salary budget space, and then it removes Joseph as a designated player. And so, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of uh, that salary, it would be under the $1.6.5 million threshold that would require a designated player spot. And uh, it would be apparently really similar to what uh, Josie Altidore uh, did when he left uh, Toronto FC to join New England last season. And uh, yeah, Joseph had a base salary of $3.75 million last season, according to uh, the MLSPA. But uh, yeah, uh, Joseph, he's apparently uh, in Miami meeting with the club. Uh, and, um, yeah, according to Cesar Luis Merlo, uh, Joseph, he wants two years from Miami, but they only want to give one. And then, uh, the Miami Herald also reported that Joseph Martinez was actually down in Miami house hunting and the deal should be done soon. So it seems like a foregone conclusion that, uh, yeah, Joseph wants Miami and, uh, it is probably going to happen. But what do you guys think? I mean, is this a very acrimonious end to the King's tenure in Atlanta when he's mentioned that this is his Barca, this is his Real Madrid? But yeah, I mean, the tension between he and Gonzalo Pineda, between he and Carlos Bocanegra, uh, it's clearly untenable. And it's been something that uh, it's come to a head and it's clear that uh, even Garth Lagerway if even if you wanted to keep our leading score uh, our uh, yeah you know he scored 111 goals for LA United in all competitions and we are just buying him out we're just buying him out uh, it, you know for a player that uh, originally, and not, maybe not originally uh, to say here, but uh, a lot of fans were wanting a statue built for him. I mean, this is a far cry from that trajectory. And uh, yeah, it is sad to see. No matter how you feel about Joseph Martinez, and uh, if you felt his antics or any of that were uncalled for, or I mean, he has been a legend in the Five Stripes. So it is definitely very, very sad to see it kind of in this way. And I'm sure there will be a resolution soon. But uh, getting to the transfer rumors. Yeah, you know, maybe the replacements for uh, Joseph Martinez and the other players that have been moved out. Well, yeah, a transfer rumor uh, of... Uh, LA United and Minnesota United. Uh, apparently, we were interested in 6 1 South Korean forward and sometimes striker Hwang Yu Jo. 
the uh, 30-year-old. He's on loan to Greek club Olympiakos from Premier League side Nottingham Forest. And yeah, he's been capped 53 times by his national team. That rumor was according to Gazeta. And uh, yeah, Fabrizio Romano, he uh, later uh, reported that Minnesota United have made an official proposal for Huang Yujo uh, to Nottingham Forest. And uh, yeah, it's a loan deal, uh, or that loan deal would be terminated with Olympiacos as he hasn't really been playing uh, very much. He's had uh, five appearances in this past half season. And apparently LAFC, Portland, Chicago, and Vancouver were also concretely interested in uh, and alongside FC Seoul and Vessel Kobe. So, yeah, he's definitely highly coveted around uh, around the world, really. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Huang Yu Zhou, uh, yeah, he's, uh, you know, kind of uh, big and strong with, uh, you know, Really, uh, really good at headers. Uh, not the best at passing, and um, yeah, maybe not the best at uh, pressing. But yeah, he does like to cut inside from the left, and he does like to uh, you know play some short passes. So he's a player that uh, would have been very intriguing, and especially for this uh, very strong, I would say. Uh, kind of contingency of Asian fans that, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a very huge Korean contingent in, uh, yeah, in and around Gwinnett County and other parts of, uh, the perimeter of Atlanta that, uh, yeah, this would be, I think, huge for LA United if we were to make this move, but it seems like Minnesota United are on the inside track to making this happen. So uh, maybe it might not, but uh, you never know. The The deal is not finalized quite yet. But uh, moving on from that, according to Pablo Marr of The Athletic, Miles Robinson, uh, he's in the last year of his deal, of course, but uh, when asked about his contract expectations, he said that he wants to keep his options open, quote-unquote. But uh, he remains focused on the job at hand and is convinced that if he does well and, uh, yeah, on the pitch, that the other pieces will fall into place on their own. But, yeah, Miles Robinson uh, was part of that MLS Media Day, of course. And, yeah, whether he's uh, going to sign the thing or not, we have no idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's definitely hugely important to Atlanta United. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, that uh, that Achilles heel uh, injury really uh, really hurt uh, not only hurt his chances for the World Cup but also hurt his chances of making a move to Europe which uh, I'm sure he uh, would have really welcomed but uh, you know probably uh, it's a rock and a hard place for him whether he can actually uh, you know sign a long term and then you never know. He might be uh, stuck in MLS, or if he, um, you know, does well this year, then maybe he can make that move. But maybe he leaves on a free. So it is very, very difficult uh, of a decision for him to make here. But uh, yeah, in terms of center back depth, uh, yeah, we don't have a ton. But uh, a rumor also came in that. Uh, LA United are on Alexander Callens with a serious offer per Nick Negrini. Uh, there's also strong interest from Argentine side Boca Juniors and uh, that an offer might be on its way as well, according to Negrini. But he's a 30-year-old free agent, uh, central defender. He won the 2021 MLS Cup with NYCFC. And uh, in 2022, he played 30 matches he scored five goals and assisted one. So really good uh, kind of uh, goal return. And uh, yeah, I mean, between Juanjo Parata and also uh, Callens, man, we, would, uh, we would have a couple of the best scoring defenders in the league for sure. But uh, yeah, in terms of uh, his playing style, he's uh, a good passer and 
uh, likes to play short passes, but uh, yeah, definitely would be a guy that uh, yeah, the Peruvian, lots of uh, lots of MLS experience and a winner, a proven winner. Uh, would you welcome Callens, left-sided player, uh, left-sided central defender to Atlanta United? I mean, I think it's a pretty intriguing move, pretty uh, yeah, pretty strong move if we were to make that, but. Uh, yeah, also according to Pablo Mar, uh, Tiago Mata, he spoke on uh, winning the MLS Cup. He said, it's a big achievement for my career to be the first active MLS player to win an M uh, win a World Cup. And uh, it's something I'll be able to celebrate for at least another four years. What a flex. He'll basically be the only player for four years uh, in MLS to have won the uh, World Cup as a an MLS player. I mean, you know, not too bad. He'll be able to uh, to say that pretty much uh, on any pitch, and no one will be able to say anything to him. But uh, moving on from that, LA United they've uh, announced the re-signing of midfielder Amar Sadic uh, to a one-year contract for 2023 and club options for the 2024 and 2025 seasons. So. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, a guy that filled in in midfield uh, admirably. I mean, uh, I think good depth, um, you know, maybe uh, has a lot to uh, to show, more to come from him. But uh, I think it's a good uh, kind of re-signing. And, uh, you know, I think he's definitely uh, got to gotta prove some more things, though. But uh, the goalkeeper core seems to have been fully flushed out. Uh, the announcement of free agent goalkeeper Clement Jupp to a one-year contract for 2023 with a club option for 2024 was announced. Jupp uh, began last season with Inter Miami before a mid-season trade to the Revolution. But Boca said Clement brings more MLS experience to our roster and goalkeeping group. Uh, he said, quote, uh, we feel confident in the group we have brought together with Brad, Quinton, and now Clement added to the mix. Uh, Jop, he's uh, born in France, Paris, France, but uh, yeah, he is uh, not going to op occupy a, uh, an international slot. He holds a U.S. green card uh, and he represents Senegal in the uh, on the international stage. So. Yeah, he's got one appearance for Senegal, and uh, yeah, I mean, he's uh, a, a player that uh, has a lot of experience, and in the uh, in the kind of maybe uh, unknown kind of season that we might have with Brad Guzan, who's just coming back from injury, I mean, it is something that, uh, you know, having experience behind him is going to be a good thing, and then plus we still have... Uh, Vincent Reyes and Justin Garces uh, that are in the, the wings, um, you know, ready at LA United 2 playing uh, constantly. So I think that's uh, going to be a good thing uh, to have some uh, some veteran presence there. But uh, moving on from that, uh, the uh, an official announcement of the loan of Marcelino Moreno to Coritiba for the 2023 season was announced by LA United. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, we basically, again, currently only have Tiago Almada and Tyler Wolf as probably that uh, that's, uh, central attacking midfielder. And, uh, you know, Moreno, of course, uh, played a lot on the left, but also was able to, uh, to play through the middle as well uh, in that number 10 position. But, yeah, also, LA United waved forward Dom Dwyer. I know a lot of people are sad to see this uh, as he, I mean, uh, no one expected to, uh, you know, love Dom Dwyer after, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, he is an Orlando City uh, former player. But yeah, I mean, he uh, definitely ingratiated himself with the Atlanta United fans. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it is uh, definitely an odd site to uh, now have pretty much only Jackson Conway as the uh, a senior uh, striker on the squad but um, yeah basically uh, yeah I mean uh, Dwyer he started six of his 25 appearances scored seven goals across all competitions and I mean 
for something of like just very he was paid super little uh he was on like the veterans minimum it is uh very perplexing to have seen him just uh get let go i mean uh he was a walking yellow card but uh it is something that um ultimately i mean him coming on sometimes it would actually be um yeah that fire that we needed at times so yeah sad to see dwyer go and uh yeah best of luck to him but um yeah moving on from that ozzy alonzo uh coming back from his acl injury he was seen back running in training and uh that's just uh good vibes man because uh yeah when he was uh in the squad and playing we were definitely looking a lot better and uh yeah, Ozzy Alonso, one of the uh, MLS vets of MLS vets. I mean, he's a guy that uh, will help this squad immensely, even if he's not playing. So, yeah, the more that uh, we see of Alonso kind of uh, in and around the team will be very, very helpful for the squad, I think. But uh, going uh, into the Atlanta United Academy, uh, so in January, uh, there were five players called up to the youth national teams Noah Cobb and Aiden Torres for the United States uh, U.S. youth national team and Malachi Grant and Ashton Gordon for Jamaica for the reggae boys and then Efren Morales for Bolivia for their U-20s so yeah definitely incredible to, to see a lot of our uh, our academy get those call-ups congrats to them but uh, yeah, just a few more pieces of news, man. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. It's uh, yeah, preseason is about to start. But yeah, uh, Charlotte FC they uh, have picked up the previously Atlanta United rumored Enzo Copetti. Uh, yeah, I mean a guy that uh, looked like a pretty good player, and you know is uh, a Charlotte FC player, uh, and. Now a uh, former LA United player, Franco Escobar, uh, he won the LA, uh, he won the MLS Cup with LAFC last season, of course, and now he is with the Houston Dynamo. Uh, yeah, really, really fascinating. He uh, he's now kind of a journeyman. He's just uh, moving, uh, you know, every year. But um, yeah, that will be really, really uh, fascinating. Kind of. Uh, Seeing him with the Dynamo as well. I mean, uh, yeah. Also another player walking yellow card. But, I mean, uh, you know, definitely a huge contributor in our MLS Cup win. So, uh, good to see him still, uh, you know, playing in the league a bit. And, uh, yeah, uh, the last bit of news is the preseason power rankings for EMLS. Uh, our own Paulo Neto. He is number one, uh, and we also had another player uh, on our Atlanta United uh, EMLS squad win some trophies as well, or some silverware rather. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're uh, we're definitely shelling out for talent in our uh, esports realm, and it's good to see that uh, yeah, not only there's silverware, but also that Palonetto uh, is ranked very very highly number one in the world so that is the news for this week and uh, almost uh pretty much uh wrapping up the entire show except for the question of the day and the question of the day is are you concerned with our uh state of the squad right now is there something that's uh you know like is hugely worrying you i mean you know, it's definitely, uh, it's January preseason, uh, you know, those matches are about to start. Uh, are we doing enough? Do we need to uh, make some moves faster? Do we, uh, yeah, we definitely need to bring in a striker probably very, very soon uh, if Jose Martinez is going to go. But yeah, what do you guys think? Are you concerned about the state of the squad right now? Let us know in the comments below. Looking forward to what you have to say. But guys, that is the episode there and there. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. I've been AJ. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.